Growing up, guys, when I got a spinning rod handed to me, I got taught that it was a way to catch a lot of fish, but you're mainly going to catch small fish. But as I've gotten older, I've learned that finesse fishing can catch big fish. And today on Bass Fishing Declassified, our team member is going to share with you some tips to help you go catch some big fish with finesse fishing setups. Hey guys, Kyle Cordiana here with Bass Fishing Declassified. Listen, we love to give opportunities to you guys. We love to do giveaways. This giveaway this month is really special to me. This is the Caliber Coffee Company. This is a coffee company that's owned and run by veterans, founded by the Army. This is a company that stands for our Second Amendment. Uh, they produce the highest quality of coffee to your cup. They didn't cut any corners. They, they source their farms from all over the world. Uh, they roast their beans locally so that you can get the freshest batch possible. But they want to give away some coffee to, to you just for watching Bass Fish and Declassified. All you gotta do is make a comment in this video below, tell us something you like about the video, and you're automatically entered to win some free coffee. Now they've got ground coffee, they got this awesome packaging, you got nine millimeter, 300 blackout, 22 caliber, 44 caliber based on strength. They got K-cups, they even got whole bean for you guys. Uh, if you just wanna go there and support them, listen, they give back to those who serve to protect our freedoms. Um, they're constantly giving back to military camo, law enforcement blue, no matter what color jersey or what color uniform you wear. If you're a first responder, they want to give back to you. They're actively searching for nonprofits who focus on PTSD, homelessness, addiction, uh, all those other veteran uh, related afflictions that, that come from serving. Uh, they want to give back. Also, you can go on there and nominate a caliber hero every month based on what you guys tell them. They're gonna pick a caliber hero, uh, someone who you think deserves it, and they're gonna give them a month free of coffee. Uh, so just an awesome company. If you just wanna go over there and support them, they've given us a coupon code to provide to you. It's Fish Coffee, F-I-S-H-C-O-F-F-E-E, -E, Fish Coffee. And that's how they know that you guys are going through us. But again, make a comment below. We'll sign up. Uh, we'll get in touch with you, get your information, and we'll figure out whether you want whole bean, ground bean, K-cups, and we'll send stuff right to your door. Hey guys, Kyle Cordiana here. Fast Fishing Declassified. Today's video is going to be about finesse fishing. So right now, I'm going to talk to you about a brand new hot bait. It's not new to everybody, but it's really struck hard here in the last month or so with the northern swing, with all the bass tournaments going on, and it's the Great Lakes finesse bait, the drop minnow. That dude right there is taking smallmouth and finesse fishing by storm. One of the coolest two things about these baits is they have a matte finish. So they're not super shiny like a lot of baits and they're neutrally buoyant. So it's a real hardy plastic. This thing doesn't rip for nothing. In fact, I've caught several fish on this bait nose hook and like you can't even tell that it's been ripped up real bad. It slides up that hook and you can put it right back on. So you're gonna get a lot of fish out of each one of these baits. But this thing is fantastic for throwing a drop shot on. It's, it, it's a bait that's gonna compete with all the other drop shot baits out there. I promise you need to try it. How I use it is I rig it up on a seven foot medium light Kistler Helium. I've got 10 pound braid to a six pound fluorocarbon leader. And this is a number two Trocar TK150 drop shot hook. And you can see how I've just got it nosed on there. That's how I like to do it. It hides the hook really good. It penetrates the fish's mouth as soon as he eats it. So that's how I like to rig it. Up north up here, I'm pretty much always throwing a 3 8 ounce Eagle Claw drop shot weight, either tungsten or lead. And that's my setup. So the other thing that's really cool about this bait is it's not only for a drop shot, but I figured out uh the way to fish what they call the cindy rig now i don't know the story behind the cindy rig name but that's the name uh you can check it out at bass blaster he talks about it but they've got a lot of cool colors this one is black and they've got their own little signature heads here that have really cool three collar system the bait doesn't come off i mean the bait is so hardy it stays on there really well but you're basically recreating a hair jig technique so you're casting it out and you're just winding it in over shallow flats anywhere from three or four foot out to like 12 to 15 foot. And you're basically just slow reeling this over the top of these small mouths head and they can't stand it and they come up and eat it. It's a really simple process. I'm throwing it on a seven foot medium action. I throw it on all fluorocarbon just cause I like how I can cast really far. Um, and this hook just penetrates those mouths really, really well. And then one other color I wanna show you guys, they've got a lot of different colors. They've got green pumpkin, they've got smoke purple and stuff. But this color right here, 
is spicy melon. This color absolutely wrecks them up north. So if you get up here on the St. Lawrence River, the Great Lakes, uh, Lake Champlain, try the spicy melon color out. Uh, they got another color called uh, Crush that's really fantastic. I think uh, uh, the smallmouth crush guy come up with that. But anyway, check these baits out. These are incredible. Um, yeah, I can't tell you enough. And they're available right now at LureNet.com. Use my coupon code CORDIANA15. Saves you 15%. Get you a stash of these. Try them out. Let me know what you think. Try it on a drop shot. And check out the Cindy rig. We'll see you guys on the next one. Okay, guys, I'm excited to share with you a couple finesse uh, tricks that I've done this past couple months to put some big fish in the boat. But before that, guys, I've started a new YouTube channel called The Fishing Coach. Check it out after this video. Subscribe, share, help me out grow this channel, and, and thank you for being a part of The Fishing Coach family. But now, let's talk about some finesse fishing stuff that I've done in the recent months. And if you've followed along, you've kind of kind of know already that like I was not really a big spinning rod guy the past couple years after I've moved down South Arkansas, more fishing to Texas. Texas. But then as I've realized with the fishing pressure after COVID and everybody fishing, man, the spinning rod has to be back out on the deck. Now, one thing that of course it's helped me is you guys know, I've, I've, I've Johnny and Matt with Core Tackle got me some hover rigs before they came out and I had to start getting my spinning stuff back out to get used to them. And guys, that, that hover rig I've, I've caught a lot of fish with. Now, one thing I'm going to share with you guys, and I think this is going to continue to go into from the fall to possibly the winter as well. But one thing I've done is put finesse style worms on the hover rig and fish them around brush piles. Now guys, I know I'm using forward facing sonar, but you can do this without forward facing sonar. Okay, so I'm just going to share with you right now that you can. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help teach you how. So right here this is a seven inch finesse worm it's the robo worm okay soft plastic i've caught some fish with this one lately not big fish okay but i've caught fish with it all right now what i've caught big fish with i know this is supposed to be a big fish deal i'm sorry guys but what i've caught the big fish with is with the flat worm and then also with a zoom magnum finesse worm those are shorter fatter style worms but i just have this hover rig on this right now because i like to test a bunch of stuff out but this flat worm right here has been one and like i said i just have that hover rig on it as well but that zoom magnum finesse worm it was red bug color this summer was my one is a shorter fatter finesse worm but the thing about them was their bottoms were all flat okay even that magnum worm the flat worm as you guys know bottoms are flat as well okay now what i'm doing okay i need to tell you what i'm doing brush piles okay as we've learned with forward facing sonar and, and you know and just that deal fish are not always in the brush piles they're in it and guys, if they are in it and they're interested in your bait, they're going to come out and look at it, okay? Or come out and eat it, all right? So if you do not have forward-facing sonar, okay? 2D side imaging, you know where your brush pile's at. You side scan it, mark it, marker buoy. Uh, you could probably put that marker buoy in the middle, come back later, and know where it's at. But throw these around the brush piles. So when I say throw them around, let's say the brush pile, the, the depth's 15 foot. That brush pile's and the depth's 15, brush pile's there, and the top of it's, you know, 7, 8, 10 foot and it's five foot below the surface or whatever. Throw it past the brush pile, kind of let it sink two, three seconds, and then start twitching your rod. Twitching your rod. What this does is it's twitching around, doing some crazy action. And some fish guys are suspended around brush piles. Some fish are on the bottom around brush piles, just hanging out, swimming around. I learned that actually from underwater camera that we have with Fish the Moment last year during this time. I'd put them dudes down around brush piles and there'd just be fish hanging around. I'm like, wow, I never, you know, never would have thought that. So throw these around brush piles and like I said, after you let it sink, just kind of twitch, twitch, twitch. And guys, they're they're interested. Bass are curious creatures. They're gonna come out. And it's probably better not to even be looking at your screen because you don't know what's there and you're not getting all nervous and you know whatever is, you know, anyway. So just twitch, 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 pause, twitch, twitch, pause. But these guys are just going around and they're doing that gliding action that hover strolling is doing. Then, and that's what the hover rig's for. It's for the hover strolling technique. Johnny and Matt did not create hover strolling. Okay, Matt's talked about that, guys. It's a technique the northern uh, anglers have been doing uh, to where you have your nail weight in the worm, okay, and you have a 90 degree hook with a 90 degree hook with the eye. But Matt was just, you know, getting sick of when he was hover strolling, losing tungsten weight. So him and Johnny got together, made up the hover rig hook. Okay, so. I've started playing with it different ways. Matt's real good with it up shallow, and he can fish it on them flats for them smallmouth down here in the south. We don't have just flats for smallmouth, but we got brush piles. So throwing these around brush piles, caught some good fish. It's something that not a lot of anglers are doing, okay? So don't be afraid. Like I said, you don't got to throw it in the heart of the brush pile. Now, I know I just talked about it. 
this hover rig hook doesn't have the wire uh, guard on it, okay? They come with a wire guard. But I'm not telling you to throw this in the heart and get it hung up. This wire guard helps protect it, get it hung up, but you still might get hung up if you get it in there because this thing's all gliding around and it just it happens to get hung up. But that's why I say throw it around the brush piles, okay? Throw it around. Trust it, okay? I'm not saying sit at a brush pile for 45 minutes. I'm just saying make three to five casts, okay? Then move to your next bait or move on, okay? So guys, hopefully uh, you, that's about dropped. Hopefully you try this technique out. Let me know if you've had success with it. Johnny's talked about on Fish the Moment uh, where he's done his live stuff at Beaver and he's used like more fluke style baits, okay? I just went with a different. Uh, guys, on my setup, okay? Denali Covert Light. Uh, this is a, uh, what's it? Spinner Rod 7-2 medium heavy. I have a 7-1 medium also. That's a Denali Attax. Excuse me. I got the Denali spinning reel, okay? Uh, what you see on here right now, I'm, I'm testing this out. I always like to test stuff out, and you guys get to see it first sometimes. Um, you know, when I film this video, this, these just hit the store today. This is the Six Cents Panamora Shad. Pan I can't even say it. Panamora. I've had a problem with my R's and W's, okay, as a kid. So anyway, um, this, is a this is the Tush Hook 2 Ot, okay? I'm testing it out. If I catch any fish, you guys will hear about it, or maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, guys, let's see what Randy has to say about catching big fish on the finesse worm. Hey, guys, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Bass Fishing Declassified, and really appreciate you guys taking some time to join us for today's video. Today, guys, I'm going to show you my finesse rig. Actually, it's a finesse rig modification I use to catch some really quality bass in the fall time of the year. This rig that I'm going to show you here is really good, like in anywhere between like mid-September up until like the first part of November. And I'm going to show you guys how to rig it and talk a little bit about how to fish it here. So it's really a simple setup, guys. The first thing I do is I take a 5 16 ounce. This is a jewel spider head. And uh, it's a little sort of a round ball head here. It's got a nice O'Shaughnessy bend hook, a wire hook with a wire weed guard. Just a really nice little finesse jig head with no skirt on it. And then I'm going to couple it up with this zoom uh, critter crawl, this little critter crawl here. And I'm going to show you guys how I modify this. Now, I don't use a skirt. This is a jig with just a crawl on it. Truly a finesse jig head presentation. So the first thing I like to do is I like to modify this crawl a little bit. Now, I take it and see the two side tentacle legs. I cut those off. And the reason I do that is um, it the, this tentacle sort of slow the fall down a little bit. So I like the way the bait falls with those tentacles off of there. And then the next thing, see that tentacle in the middle? See it's sort of how it makes everything look together? I simply snip that off about probably a quarter of an inch from the end. And what that does, that gives me a little separation in the claws. And in the clear water situation, I like the way that looks separated. And then finally, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna cut one segment off of the craw, which is about maybe a quarter of an inch or so. So this is the way I've got my trailer. So. Next thing, I'm going to thread it on, and this is real critical, guys. This this little critter crawl, there's you don't have much room for air here when you thread the jig on. So take your time and go real slow. You got to go right through the middle, and you got to go perfectly straight because the diameter of this little critter crawl is small enough that if you if you just miss it by a little bit, you're going to uh, have the bait on there crooked, and also you're going to have part of the the hook or the jig head sticking out. So just take your time and go real slow on it. Come up there over the first thing there on it. And then that's the way we got the jig head looking there. So it's a nice simple, guys. It's a nice little edible tidbit. And one of the things you'll notice about bass in general, they love a small crawdad. I mean, this, this bait here is about a three inch long crawdad. Bass love to eat three inch long crawdads. They would, they'll eat a three inch, three inch long crawdad before they will a five or six inch one. So the thing that I like about this is it's just the right size. It's a finesse presentation. It's sort of like a mix between a Ned rig and a shaky head and a finesse jig. And it's really good in a clear water environment, guys. If you have water visibility where you're fishing that is like anywhere over three foot visibility and you've got rock, like you've got bluffy banks, channel banks, chunk rock, something like that. This is a great choice. If I had one uh, type of cover I could tell you to fish this on in the fall time of the year is put it on 10 pound test Seaguar and Vizx 4 carbon line, you know, like a seven foot bait casting rod and go back about one half to two thirds of the way back in the major creek arms and look for the steepest rocky bank in those creek arms and just methodically pitch and flip it down the bank and work it out from 
maybe like from two down to like 10 feet or so. And that's just a really good way to catch them in the fall time of the year. So give it a try, guys. It'll definitely catch you some quality fish. So. Really quick, if you guys enjoy the content in this video and want more personalized instruction, head to our website, fishthemoment.com. Then go to the virtual lessons page. Here you can book one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons with each member of the Fish the Moment team. In these one-hour lessons, the Fish the Moment team member will break down your lake using Google Earth and a contour line map and answer any questions you have. Whether you're preparing for an upcoming fishing tournament or a fun weekend on the lake, make sure you sign up for one of these one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons so you're fully prepared to catch as many fish as possible on the water. Check them out at fishthemoment.com.